Hey, what's up guys? It's Derek from the Baseball Channel. I'm coming at you again today with yet another video. And today we're going to be talking all about the Chicago White Sox going into 2020. They've made some huge offseason splashes, and we're going to be figuring out, are they contenders? Okay, so I'm going to start off by answering the question, and then I'll explain. No, I do not think they are contenders. Um, so you probably know the White Sox haven't had a winning season since 2012. We're going into 2020. That's uh, not the best statistic there. In 2012, they had 85 wins. You know, they won the World Series in 05. They haven't really done much of anything since. They made, I think, the playoffs once after that. They haven't been in the playoffs, I think, since 2010. Last year, they finished third in their division. They had, they had 72 wins last year for a third-place finish. So, you know, it's really not a great team. They haven't been a good team in a while. Um, but they've been building. The White Sox have a ton of young talent that's finally either in the MLB making an impact or getting ready to. Yohan Moncada, Eloy Jimenez, um, who else do they have? Um, well, Luis Robert, he's a top center fielder coming up. Nick Madrigal is a second baseman who should come up and really hit for average. They have just a lot of guys. Um, Tim, Tim Anderson, he's not one of their younger ones, but he had a breakout season last year. So they have a lot of talent. Um, and then this offseason, they've gone, I don't want to say they've gone all in on free agency, but they've really shown that they are dedicated to winning and putting a better product on the field. And in the era of tanking, I am so glad that they're actually making the decision and investing in their team and not just being so satisfied with mediocrity, if they can even get that. They, you know, they, they need to do better. They still may not beat the Twins, but at least now they have a chance. And baseball's random. The best team doesn't always win. So... Although I don't think they're World Series contenders, if it's a good team, you always have a chance to win. And that's kind of a cool thing about baseball. You know, the best team can get knocked off. You know, the best team does not always win. In basketball, it's a little more straightforward. If you're very talented and you're more talented than the other team, you're probably going to win. But baseball, there's just that factor of randomness. The playoffs are weird. The best team, you know, it, it just doesn't always go your way. So I'm glad to see the White Sox are going in this offseason, and let's talk a little bit about who they've acquired. So obviously starting off things with Yasmani Grandal. Now this is a really, really good signing. It was kind of what got their wheel spinning, and Grandal, he's a good catcher. He can hit, you know, decent average. He'll slap, you know, 20, 30 home runs. All that is great, but what's also really good is his framing. He is I think finished second in the league in like the advanced framing statistics, like defensive run save, stuff like that. He's really, really good at stealing strikes, and that is hugely helpful for any rotation. Um, the White Sox have a few young guys. They just signed, signed Dallas Keuchel, who we'll talk about in a second. And having a catcher that can give you extra strikes is such a difference maker. It can really reduce your ERA by a significant margin especially for guys like Dallas Keuchel, who don't throw a lot of strikes. And since we're talking about Keuchel, let's talk about him. The White Sox just signed him the other day for a three-year deal worth $55 million. Um, there is a fourth-year option worth, I want to say, like $18 mil, And that's a really good signing. You know, it's just another guy they really needed. They needed another starting pitcher to be competitive. And they went out and they got him. And I'm really glad to see that they did. Now, Keuchel... It'll be interesting to see how that pays off. Last year was kind of a weird season for him. He didn't sign until June. Only signed a one-year deal with the Braves and kind of had a bumpy season. Finished the year pretty strong. Um, all he needs is his ground balls. If he can keep getting ground balls, it's huge for him. And it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of be back to where he was at the end of the year or if his steady decline is just going to keep dropping down. The other thing is Grand Dahl should help him a lot, as I just talked about. All right, so next we have Gio Gonzalez. Now, I really like this signing. They got him one year for $5 million. It's a low-risk deal. Gio last year only threw about 80 innings, but his ERA was pretty low, and Gio's also just a great veteran leader to have in the clubhouse with all your young guys, and I really like Gio. He has a good curveball. Um, sometimes he struggles with command. It'll be interesting to see how he does this year. I'm hoping for the best. I Gio was in that years ago. Love that guy. I love watching him play. I'm glad he signed. I hope he has a good year with the White Sox. Now I want to talk a little bit about this starting rotation. So 
you know, leading it off, you had Lucas Giolito, who just had a breakout year in 2019. He had a 3-4 ERA, finished 6th in the Cy Young voting. This guy has been talented, and this was really his coming out campaign. When he For years, he was actually with the Nationals, and he, along with Reynaldo Lopez, got traded for Adam Eaton. Um, but with the Nats and kind of early on with the White Sox, he scuffled a bit. He's a Tommy John guy, but he never really established himself. In 2019, he came and he showed why he was drafted so high, why he was such a highly touted prospect, and I'm really, really happy to see him do well. Next up, you have Dallas Keigel, who we talked about. He's crafty. He's not going to beat you with velo, but he has good breaking pitches, good sinker baller, I believe. Um, actually, no, a cutter, I think it is. Um, but he gets a ton of ground balls, misses the barrel just enough to get contact but get outs. Uh, Keuchel, a good pitcher. Now, Gio Gonzalez, again, they're not exactly sure what they're going to get out of him. They're hoping he's a good starter. Um, obviously, don't we all? Um, but he's a guy who can easily have an ERA under four, and that's really what they need. Now, Reynaldo Lopez, he's a younger guy. Good velo, but his spin rate isn't quite there. He'll get outs. You know, they're going to, at best, I think he has an ERA in the four to five range. And he's a decent fourth to fifth starter, I guess. He's not great. Last year, he kind of took a step backward from what he had done before. So obviously, they're going to hope he goes forward. And if he does, they're going to be a much better team. Now, their fifth starter, right now, it's slated to be Dylan Cease. But he was bad in 2019. He had a negative .2 war, 5.79 ERA. But he does throw upper 90s. His swing rate's good. So if he can get his command, kind of work on a good secondary pitch, Seas could be a good fifth starter. Um, but the other guy they have is Michael Kopech. If you don't remember who he is, um, he's a prospect. He hasn't played in over a year because he had Tommy John surgery. But this guy is a Noah center guard type. Just throws absolute cheetos down your throat. He is really, really good. The White Sox are hoping he'll have a strong 2019, he'll, or 2020, I should say. It'll be interesting to see how they deal with him coming off of the surgery. Obviously, being a flamethrower, they're going to have an ending limit. They're not going to want to um, use him up. Um, he also, he's young. He hasn't even pitched a full MLB season. So, they're definitely not going to overuse him, but as kind of an extra starter to throw into the rotation, look out for Michael Kopech in 2020. Guy has a ton of talent. He can throw a fastball. Alright, so that's the starting rotation. Let's talk about this lineup because it is pretty good. There are a couple holes, but they have some serious notable players. So, Eloy Jimenez came up last year and absolutely shined in the big leagues. Played about 120 games, rookie season hitting 30 home runs. That's impressive. He's going to be good for years to come, and that is the theme with this team. Next up, you got Yohan Moncada. Again, another guy. He's, he was the number one overall prospect in baseball a couple years ago. He is going to be good for years to come. He can hit for average. Just listen to his stats from 2019. 4.6 war. He hit 315. Um, 25 home runs. 367 on base, 915 OPS. This is what, his second year in the league, third year in the league? Really, really impressive. He had a great campaign. He's going to be good. He is good. Um, Yohan Moncada, I believe he'll probably be playing third base this year for them. White Sox fans have to be excited. He is a good player. Next, you got Tim Anderson at shortstop. Defensively, a little shaky, but last year he hit. He won the batting title in the American League. Really, really glad he could come out like that. Um, a lot of people are predicting his average to fall a little bit just because his, um, he swings a lot and his in-play um, batting average wasn't great last year. But even if he falls more to like a 300 batting average, that's still great. Um, if he could swat a few more home runs, throw in those bad flips. Oh, that bad flip that he did last year. Oh, my God. Talk about energizing his fan base. Tim Anderson is a good player. Um, if he hits 300 for them, they are going to be in business. Love watching that guy play. Um, and then you got Jose Abreu at first base. Abreu is another guy. He's going to hit home runs. His average isn't terrible. Um, good war. Jose Abreu is a great piece. And then you got Yasmani Grandal thrown right into that lineup, bolstering that. So you have that's six quality guys, quality batters. 
Um, and obviously the DH is a huge hole. They do have James McCann, who was a catcher last year. Um, he's got a great option to throw in. Obviously, he's your backup catcher, too. Um, so he can't DH every day. He's like a 260 hitter, I think. Um, so they need to sign one more guy. There are talks about Edward Encarnacion. I think that would be a really good fit. Hey, guys, just editing this video real quick. And Encarnacion just signed today. Um, One-year deal, I think, worth $17, $18 million. Thought I'd go ahead and include that. He hadn't signed yet at the time of this recording. Um, but another really good move. He's a good bat. So, uh, you know, good for the Sox. But this is going to be a good lineup. They're going to win some games. Um, and then let's get into this bullpen. So Alex Colome, the closer, he's pretty solid. 30 saves last year, ERA under three. And what I really like is this bullpen has three more guys with an ERA under three. Now, they do probably need to add an arm or two. Um, the White Sox have said they want to add an arm or two. But this isn't a bad bullpen to begin with. Baseball, in, as a whole, is really struggling with bullpen production. Um, this next year, it's going to be very interesting because of that one-ending rule for relievers. Um... But they also have Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, and Jimmy Cordero. All decent ERAs last year. Uh, guys that they can throw out there with confidence, and that's really, really good to have. A lot of teams did not have strong bullpens in 2019 and are trying to bolster them this offseason. If they can add one or two more mid- to upper-tier relievers, that would be huge for them. But the biggest need is still that DH. And ultimately, for the White Sox going forward, you have a ton of talent, and there's more on the way. So you have Luis Robert, center fielder, coming in. He's a top prospect. In the minor leagues last year, he had 32 home runs, 36 steals, and 120 games. That is really, really good. I believe he also hit over 300. The guy can play. Um, he can run. He can hit with some power, too, which you don't always see from speedy center fielders. He's going to be really exciting. Probably going to be playing a lot of center field for them in 2020. And then next up, you got Nick Madrigal. He's probably going to fill in at second base this year. Guys, in two seasons in the minor leagues, about 160 games, Madrigal stuck out 21 times. 21 Ks in 160 games. Yeah, I think that guy feels pretty good about himself. He hits for average, not a ton of power. He's only like 5'7", doesn't have that Altuve in him. Um, maybe just because trash cans aren't being banged in his ear. Um, but I am really excited to see these guys play. They're going to be thrown right into that lineup. And really, that makes eight really strong guys in the lineup. Get a good DH, and uh, you're looking strong. You're looking really strong for the White Sox. And now let's get to talking about them. A little bit bigger picture. Um, do I think they're contenders? Um, for the World Series, not really. Again, like I said, I don't think they're World Series contenders. But I think for the first time in a long time, they're contenders in their division. And I think they have a legitimate chance to knock off the Twins. I don't think it's guaranteed. But I think they really can, you know, if these young guys show up to the scene and do what they can, especially Robert and Madrigal, I think they have a good chance to be better than the Twins. I, don't th I think they have a good chance to be better than the Indians. Um, the Indians just traded Kluber, didn't get a lot back for him. It was really more of a salary dump. And the White Sox are investing. Um... They're paying players, they're getting guys in free agency, and they've shown that they want to do more. I really like that. I think the White Sox could be a sneaky win for this division. I'm not confident in that, but they're definitely going to contend for it. I think they're going to finish over 500. This is a good team, and they're going to be good for years to come. And I'm very glad their build has worked out for them. Um, I think the White Sox are going to be good. World Series... Probably not. I don't think their rotation is quite strong enough. Keuchel really isn't as good as his name. Giolito is great. If they can get another one of those young guys to have a sub-4 ERA, that would be huge for the White Sox, huge for that team. I don't think it's realistic necessarily, but I do think they have potential. I think this team is going to win some games. I think they're going to be really fun to watch. That young core is great, and the White Sox are going to be good. I definitely think the White Sox are going to be good. Definitely keep an eye out for them in 2020. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and play ball. This is the Baseball Channel.